Today's going to be called Outgrown. It's a really, really cool topic that I think is going to be relevant for everybody. You know, it's the idea that whatever we learned even up to yesterday might not apply as of today or to a attract tomorrow. Great morning, world. Welcome to the Rise Up with Dragon podcast with your host, Dragon. Great morning, world. <clears throat> this is your boy, Dragon, coming to you um, with my Mondays and Fridays, my Rise Up with Dragon. Been doing this for several years now, and uh, I'm excited that we have finally expanded to uh, LinkedIn as well. I really enjoy LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, uh, is a really cool environment that, unlike other social media platforms, has a very, very direct directive as to why people are meeting, like people are actually looking to network over there. So getting a lot of positive feedback about that. So what's up, everybody in LinkedIn? Um, and as you know, we're, we're streaming into Facebook, YouTube, and we also have, um, if you want to join clubhouse, which is just an audio only platform and you can find me at makes sense. That's it at makes sense. No space in between two S's. So great morning, everybody. Today's episode of the podcast, which is rise up with dragon. You can find it at all the platforms. Please, as always, we always appreciate when you subscribe, rate, and review us, Rise Up with Dragon and iTunes. And uh, today's going to be called Outgrown. It's a really, really cool topic that I think is going to be relevant for everybody. Um, always wondering and thinking, because my book is flying right now, um, always questioning myself as to what it is that I look to do for people. And, you know, I've, I've explained it in so many different ways where... I just love to get people to think. I love to help people break free from their mental prison, getting unstuck um, and things like that. And I'm designing this whole system. That's what my book is about. It's just my whole journey um, that's led me to this place where I, I want to pay forward what it is that I've accomplished, um, you know, becoming this mythical creature in my life. That's why I call myself the dragon. Um, and created this interface response system, IRS, and that's what I teach people and that's what's going to be in my book. Um, but basically what I'm, what I'm looking to do is, is help people unpack things that um, they were wrongly taught since they were children. You know, we're all programmed, you know, by our mother, father, teacher, preacher, and society now. Anything that we're consuming on a regular basis, which was mom- you know, father, teacher, preacher, and now it's society. Whatever we're consuming is programming our minds. And if our minds are programmed, that means that we're running a program. And if we're running a program, then that program is calling all the shots, <clears throat> meaning whatever it is that happens in this world, which I call happenings, you know, of someone saying something to you, events, you know, stressful events or exciting events, um, how you respond to those things, which is the only thing that's really in your control. We don't control things. We control how we respond and react. That's being done by this program. So if we can learn how to identify this program and start calling our own shots, right, rather than in, in the topic today, outgrown is, you know, it's the idea that whatever we learned even up to yesterday might not apply as of today or to attract tomorrow. Um, before I do that, I want to share something uh, that I'm going to pull from my book. So there's different phases of learning the interface response system. Um, one of the first phases is just acknowledging why you think the way you think, you know, so there's a lot of histor historical evolutionary stuff that's going on in our brains, the reason why our brains um, work the way they do. And this is not my topic today yet. This is just a thought that I wanted to give you because I, I bring gifts. So uh, the, the first thing is, is just to acknowledge, you know, it's like, forgive me for I know not what I do. We've been programmed for 20,000 years to think a certain way. So that's the first thing you, is you realize why we have a tendency of perceiving things. 
Um, but the second is once you cleanse yourself and you get to this point where you understand that you are in a little bit more control and you can call the shots, one of the second phases of this interface response system is knowing what you want, knowing what you want and what you don't want. Because if you're if you all of a sudden gain control, what that means is you can start deciding what you want. So I refer to this as creating your North Star. I love that. You know, a lot of people call it true North and I've heard people call it North Star. I like North Star. So when I, when I refer to North Star, I'm talking about our goal, our dreams, right? And all we have to do is find the North Star and we'll find ourselves home when we get lost. So one of the things that I recently added in this, um, I talk a lot about this idea of, uh, of, creating or, or making a quality decision. This is interesting. So a quality decision is one where we radically accept not only the good, you know, the thing that we want, but we also radically accept the pain and the suffering and the struggle and the challenges associated with it. So when somebody makes a quality decision to go after their North Star or, or leverage and create their North Star, they understand what comes with it. Right. So the other word that I that I was just, you know, playing with, that's the same thing, because you, 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 you need to be open. Right. In order to be able to do something like that. So the word is, is a word you use all the time. But in this context, it's pretty cool. And I just want to offer you maybe you write it down and just think about to what degree you exhibit willingness. So I just love willingness, you know, willingness and a quality decision are like brother and sister. So here's an example of um, this radical acceptance and willingness that I want to give you. And it'll kind of make you think that uh, we're, we're just so crazy. <laughs> That's what I, I love human beings, you know, the, the happy ones, the mean ones, the evil ones, the, the nice ones. I just, I'm so fascinated by human behavior because I use this IRS. So here's an example. If you were to quit smoking, so I know that a lot of people have smoked, a lot of people have drank and stuff like that. But if you're if you're embarking and you're enjoying some sort of addicted be, addictive behavior, and it could be in relationships as well, you know, like a narcissist or something like that. But if you're addicted to something like smoking, um, if you were to quit smoking and try to break that addiction to nicotine, well, you already know when you make that decision to break that, you already know that there's going to be physiological and psychological, you know, things associated with it, like cravings and stuff like that, right? So you plan for it, knowing that those things are going to be there. You know, it's very rare that somebody tries to quit something they're addicted to without acknowledging that there's some sort of a withdrawal. So there's an example of willingness, right? Um, one of the reasons people don't quit things is because they're not willing to go through the pain. It's interesting. Even if they know it's bad for them, they're not willing. So why do we complain and criticize when those cravings come? Now, even if you're willing, when the cravings come, I'm just giving you a little bit of what I was writing about this morning before I get into my rise up. When those cravings come, all of a sudden your brain, that automatic response, which is from your old program, starts to complain about them as if they're too hard, right? So willingness is about acceptance. So that's the other word is acceptance. Like to what degree are you radically accepting all things attached to your life experience? You know, we all want to be dazzled with life. We want to create this, you know, amazing bedazzled life. Um, but we also have to recognize that part of that is being humbled from the other side, you know, nothing lasts forever and things like that. So that's why you would say nothing lasts forever. You know, when you say nothing lasts forever, it means, you know, you're, you're, you're phase placing yourself to appreciate what's going on right there. Um, and anyway, the reason why I shared that is I just think that that probably is one of the greatest things that a human being could ever accomplish in life is being able to radically accept both sides of the coin. So I've spoken about this, you know, I, I did a rise up about good day versus bad day. You know, if you think that when you're having a good day, there's no bad day happening. Um, that's why a bad day will ruin your good day. Remember, you know, you're, whatever you're focused on is what you're focused on. 
So I just find it fascinating that somebody could be having a good day and and be blind to the fact that there's still a bad day happening, but they're just not focused on it. So if they if they knew that while they were having a good day, that there was a bad day, it's just it didn't apply to them that day, right? So when the bad day came, they would say, oh, there it is, but it wouldn't ruin their bad day. It wouldn't rain on their parade. So uh, one of the things that I one of the tools that I like to use in that realm is uh, when people ask me, how are you doing dragon? I always say it's all good. Radical acceptance, right? So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you uh, for the, for all of you that listen to the podcast, you know, the, the most feedback that I get about my podcast and I'm getting a lot now, and by the way, our newsletter started today. I mean, I don't know when you're hearing this podcast drop, but today's the 30th of uh, August. And uh, if you want to register or subscribe to our free newsletter, um, there's other stuff in there. Like I do a a weekly blog and stuff that'll, you know, just it's called the Dragon's Lair. And and we we catch you up on some other podcast news and stuff like that. And we're going to start advertising and and supporting some of our local um, just people that are growing and stuff like that. So anyway, today is Outgrown. And I love this concept of evaluating um, what it is that you've outgrown, right? Um, so I'm just gonna just gonna flow with this a little bit. So the ideas, skills, and tools. Think about this in in terms of you. The ideas, skills, and tools that got me this far may no longer apply effectively in my journey towards what's next. So here was where this rise up started. I sat down and I started to write and I've been interviewed on a lot of podcasts and everybody always asks me, Hey, tell me a story about dragon. Tell me the story about how you met chicken and all this stuff. Everybody wants to know how I went from being messed up to blessed up. And that's the best part of your story too. I, I love hearing real stories of how people went from you know, one place to another. It's, it's, it's inspiring. And also the tactical components of it, you know, there's a lot of learning in there. You'll notice that most public speakers, um, their whole system, whatever it is that they teach has to do with something that they have experienced and then they pay it forward. But what I was thinking the other day is, you know, here I am today, a reflection you know, of everything that I have experienced that's brought me here. So I have gratitude for everything that I've experienced. But when I start picking apart some of the thoughts, feelings, and actions that I've utilized and I've, you know, partaken in, I can see how they've gotten me here today. But the question I had for myself is, do they still apply today or have I outgrown them, right? Now, when I say I've outgrown something, what it means is that I'm consciously aware of the fact that something no longer applies today. However, you know, if 95% of my brain is functioning with unconscious, I might be practicing things today that once were helpful and useful, good and bad, that no longer apply. So if I start stepping into that space where I become conscious of whether or not the thing, the thoughts, feelings, and actions that I carried today when I woke up this morning, if I can identify something that doesn't apply because I've outgrown it, well, I'm going to accelerate and leverage myself to move forward. More importantly, get rid of the drag, right? So that's what I want everybody to think as I go through this is what have you outgrown? Who have you outgrown, right? We talk a lot about this idea of getting rid of toxic people in our life. Well, if you have to get rid of a toxic person, it means that for whatever reason they served you, you brought them into your life. Bad relationship, you know, a a friendship that's gone bad or something. At some point, it served you. So you can look back at that and acknowledge it and have gratitude for it. But when you when you make that conscious decision that it's time to get rid of it, drop the baggage, we all have this baggage. That's the acknowledgement. And that's, it's just a word. It's, that's the acknowledgement that, that you've outgrown it, meaning it no longer serves you. So it's just a power move in your life to recognize what you're, when you're looking at your North Star, the next thing that you have to do is how do I, my secondary decision to go get my North Star, how do I make sure that I'm in full support of it? Well, you should be doing nothing 
that doesn't leverage that becoming a reality. You know, the whole concept of becoming a minimalist, like Chicken and I, it's not necessarily about our belongings, although that fits into it as well. Becoming a minimalist is making sure that you are minimizing almost to the point of nothing allowing anything or anyone in your family in your in your in your uh, reality that's not in support of moving forward and i've done a lot of rise ups on that so what have you outgrown so what ideas structure and strategies have you outgrown love this so a big part of the interface response system the irs is developing a strong strategic plan of action to support and leverage your desired future outcome, right? So if you have this North Star in mind, a big part of achieving that is having, you know, creating a vehicle and a structure that brings you there. And if you can't learn how to identify what you've outgrown, um, your, your, your car is going to have a, a flat, you know, you might be driving over spikes, and things like this, unnecessary. So this requires, to build this, <clears throat> this stru structure and strategy, this requires that we become agile from the amazing book Susan David wrote, Emotional Agility. Gotten a lot of stuff out of that. Please go read that book, great book. Um, but it requires that we become agile and open and recognize, and there's that willingness thing popping up again, recognize when we may have outgrown those thoughts, feelings, and actions because they no longer apply. Also fun to look into the future at yourself, say five years from now. Let's say you put together the strategy and the structure to win, right? And you've got it and you've, you've identified what you've outgrown and all that stuff. If you go into the future five years from now and you're at the perfect fitness level, your, your mental, your relationships, everything, you're unfuckwithable, all that stuff, um, you've got financial freedom, time freedom, and all that stuff. Ask yourself, go interview that person in the future and ask them what no longer applies that you're doing today to get it. So we always have to be open and willing to kind of like reassess and debrief. You know, if you look at the flow state, I'm fascinated with the science of flow. Um, What's interesting about the flow state is nobody ever stays in flow. Now you can hack flow, you can go into flow, but nobody ever stays in flow. Flow is, it's not, a, it's not that it's temporary, but there's a debrief, there's a, a reprieval at the end of it. Now, a lot of people get bummed out when a flow state, you know, when everything's working well and you're just like unconsciously crushing life. And then after that, almost like a drug ends, you kind of, you kind of have this little down, a little bit of a downer, which really is only a time to debrief and learn from what just happened. And then what's interesting is the next phase before you start to go back towards flow is you're approached once again with a challenge, an obstacle or struggle. So what you learn in flow is that you have to continuously, you know, work your system. As a matter of fact, the IRS is all about helping people get into something that they would interpret as flow. Um, so in any case, you have to be agile, open, and willing um, to make sure that some of these things, when you debrief, no longer apply, that they're not going to, that you don't need them or they, they're not efficient. A lot of times what I, I need to do as well is I always go on three-month runs with business goals, physical goals. I'm in it right now. I'm in a 90-day run and you know, bad timing because Chicken and I are getting ready to go to Aruba. Um, but, you know, <laughs> a thought just popped into my head. Somebody in Clubhouse the other day told me, I go, Dragon, your voice is so smooth. And I was thinking, that's the first time I ever heard about that. So looking for some feedback on whether or not my voice works for you. Um, I always I always didn't like my voice. Um, but anyway, we're going to Aruba. So I'm, I'm in this 90 day, you know, perfect program. You know, I'm, I'm rocking our program with all of our clients and our coaches. Um, and I'm just feeling great, but I'm, we're going to get, get ready to go to Aruba, but we're just shifting our mind, but also with my business and everything I'm in. So what I'm going to have to do is even during the 90 days, I have to assess, this is part of my, my 15 days of discipline course. I have to reassess whether or not the things that I'm doing are effective high leverage activities, high leverage thoughts, feelings, and activities. Thoughts and feelings could be 
you know, lever high leverage or low leverage. So I'm constantly reassessing. And that's a big part of it. Never get down on yourself when you identify that you've wasted time. That's actually a very, very big time efficient thing to do to, to recognize that you're doing something inefficient and wasting time. What sucks is when you don't look at that stuff. So a simple example um, of this might be your eating, or as I call it, fueling and your exercise regimen. So I'm 50 years old right now. 50 years old. So I'm 50 years old and my metabolism, this is something that I've, I've become conscious of, you know, my metabolism and my body have evolved, right? I don't consider myself old, but they've changed and transformed and evolved to handle a 50 year old, a health conscious and healthy living 50 year old body. So they've evolved. And in order for me to achieve my desired level of optimal health, I had to become agile meaning I had to look at my workout and what I eat. I had, I had to be open and willing to recognize that the way I did it even last year doesn't work as well. So I had, to, I had to become open, agile, and be willing to change and take the risk of change um, and to, to try to figure it out now. So when I'm coaching somebody, that's kind of my job. If, if somebody creates their North Star and they want to go after something, um, we've got all, we've got a whole fleet of new coaches coming in and, and, you know, what's interesting about new coaches that I'm training to build, you know, their businesses and help people, um, they've, they've still got all of their old concepts about what is and what isn't. So, you know, it's interesting when you're mentoring somebody and they ask you a question like, Hey, how, cause they know that I have the results that they want. So they'd say, how do I do this? And I would say this, like this, this, and this, and then it's one thing to put your own flair on it, but but very often new coaches will say, well, I'm going to do it like this. And what's interesting about that is that's that's called rigidity. That means that this is the way I do it. And very often I have to remind them, what is it that you're asking me for help in? Aren't you asking me for help because the way that you do it hasn't worked? Because if, if the way we did things worked, well, then you wouldn't need a mentor. You wouldn't need a system or a structure. So sometimes I have to remind people because they're unconsciously getting ready to practice insanity, to do things the way they think work when they actually know that they don't, you know? So anyway, it's so fascinating. Um, <clears throat> so like I said, you know, my, my metabolism's changed and I had to change things up and recognize that there are some things that I learned to enjoy and execute uh, past uncomfortable things that I made comfortable. I put into my permanent comfort, you know, new normal reality. Um, and then I had to uh, embrace some new strategies. I had to be willing, open, agile, and learn how to embrace new strategies. And another thing that I, I've learned along the way is the first thing that I wanted to do is find somebody that knows what it's like to, to transition from 40 to 45 to 45 to 50, or even 49 to 50. They've been through it, and I sit at their feet as an apprentice all of a sudden, and I say, how did it work for you? Because I have to be the student as well. You know, that's that's another reason why I respect the elderly, you know, because not because I should, even though I probably should, I respect them because they've lived longer. They've experienced things that I might think I know about, but I have never experienced. So open, agile, willing. So this concept, you know, helps us use our time more efficiently and you know, as well as prevents us from the very definition of insanity, like I said before. So have you ever caught yourself going after something with an old performing system, right? So there's, there's another little thing for you to, to ponder today. Have you ever caught yourself going after a goal using a strategy, a structure, and a, an old performing system that's never worked for you before? Why would we do that? It's because we're naturally... We, we naturally lean towards being rigid in our ways. And the reason why is it's hard for us to give up on something that we once thought was a good idea. And the reason why, and that's that concept of identifying that it's you've outgrown it, right? The reason why it's hard is because we all 
have this inherent desire to be right and significant. So we will recall something that we've let go of to see if maybe it'll work now when we have no reason to think that it would. The smart person, the person that takes the path of least resistance would not listen to everything that their cult leader tells them, but would take the information and, and process it. Hmm. Let me work that out. Let me try that for a, a three month run, you know, and, and find out what works. So it's the same reason um, this concept of using an old performing system. It's the same reason that we must always upgrade um, soft and hardwares and computers. There's another analogy. You know, I just bought a new computer, just got a new computer, a new laptop. And what's interesting is, is I had that conversation, like how many gigabytes and terabytes and perform. And they, they, they've got these new performance levels that I hadn't heard of because I was using an old performing system. So my concept is, is I'm going to ask this guy, this genius, I'm going to say, well, what do I need? And he says, well, what are you trying to accomplish? So I, I'm unveiling what my North Star is. Here's, here's my goal. This is what I want to do. And I want to have room for growth into the unknown. So he tells me, well, then you need to upgrade to this, right? Even though I don't know what it is, I'm going to say I'm in, right? Why? Because I'm willing and I'm agile. And that's a big part of this interface response system. But it's also my way of saying, oh, the... Uh, I don't even remember the the names of the software platforms, but I'll, I'll say, oh, so the 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 howling owl, you know, software system, it no longer applies, and and they say, no, you've outgrown it. So that's the concept of outgrown. So the new demands and advancements in tech, you know, in your computer, but also in your life, right? Um, that's an interesting thought right there. The new advancements of tech. You know, how does tech relate to the human body? Well, you know, as we move forward, there's new thoughts, feelings, and actions. That's our tech. You know, that's interesting. You know, as a human being, whatever it is that I'm applying as my strategy, my thoughts, feelings, and actions, that's my tech. So as the, as the demands and advancements in tech require new performance systems. So we're just like computers, right? And that's interesting because we think that when we get older, um, we become less in need of a performance system. In reality, because of how long you've been at this, this thing called life, you need an advanced one, an advanced one that's not too hard. It's, it's self-sufficient. So the old are inefficient and no longer cut the cake. So you can run them, right? You can run the old programs. They, they still work, meaning they still function. You can run them because you like them till the cows come home. But if you've got a North Star in mind and you're seeking growth in this new evolved reality, you need to recognize and be con conscious of what you've outgrown in them, right? So that's, that's what I want to offer you today is just to identify, look for another, another way to practice this uh, skill set is to create an, a tolerance list, right? You write down the things that you're tolerating and then you just ask yourself, am I ready to stop tolerating them? And the easiest way to let go of something or someone you're tolerating is to just identify that they no longer apply. Or look into the future and say, is this person, is this thing, is this thought, feeling, and action in my reality five years from now when I have everything I want? No. A lot of people say they want to be a millionaire, but they never go into the future and, and look at how their life will be when they're a millionaire. So you'll, you'll identify that some of the shit that you're putting up with and people right now, they don't exist in the future. So why would you think that they should exist now? tolerance list. So what in your life, like an old pair of your favorite sneakers or ripped up shirt that I like to wear when I work out with holes in them um, needs to be let go. So that's the idea of becoming a minimalist, right? If you say I'm a minimalist, it doesn't mean that you're just like sitting outside in a tent whittling wood. It means that I don't allow anything. I don't hold on to anything that means nothing. And that doesn't serve me, right? And you get to decide with that. What concepts about yourself or others might have served you in the past but prevent you from your future? Just like a little boy 
on a windy beach. I love analogies. Just like a, a little boy on a windy beach holding onto a kite on a string, right? The line represents, or the kite represents that thing that you might may or may not need to let, let go because you've identified you've outgrown it. That thing and the string needs to be cut, allowing the kite to fly away into the winds of change. So I look at, I always look at that little boy because I used to talk a lot about in the early dragon days, cut the string from your past. And I have a whole chapter called Life is a Line. Um, and, and it just talks about the fact that as soon as something's happened, you can embrace what it's done for you and how it's gotten you here, good or bad. But you also have to learn how to cut the string from it because it no longer applies today. It's no longer an efficient thought, feeling or action today. Um, or in your future self. So it's a tough decision to do this. It's very tough for us to let go of things. Um, I don't know exactly why, but I think we're we're afraid of letting go of our past, maybe because we're afraid of whether or not we will need it one day, um, or it probably is closer attached to this concept of being afraid of dying. You know, when you let go of your past, like things that have happened in your youth, there's this perception maybe that you're letting go of your youth and now you're just going to get old or something like that. Fascinating. We should do a whole rise up on that one day. But I understand why it's a tough decision. If I walk around the idea, um, it's a tough decision, but it's validated by the distinction and ineffectiveness of that thought, feeling, and action coupled with the potentially obsessive desire that you've attached to achieving your future state or that North Star. If I'm obsessed with where I want to go and what I want to have and all those things, and then I go look at the ineffectiveness of something that I'm holding on to or the unnecessity of what I'm holding on to, it's much easier to cut the string. But if you don't take the step of recognizing where you want to go, you might struggle in identifying that something's ineffective. Oh, God, that's so powerful, man. If somebody can grab onto this, their whole life's going to change. So in other words, when we can no longer see, when we can no longer campaign for something as effective, and a lot of you, a lot of you will wait until it's really, really late in the game to acknowledge that, right? We just keep fighting. But when we can no longer see that our current thoughts, feelings, and actions are leveraging and supporting forward progress towards our desired state, our North Star, we can no longer see to using them as the structure or the vehicle that's going to take us into town. And that's when you identify that most of the time, when I do my Life is a, long, uh, Life is a Line chapter, I just evaluate how much time it actually takes to move forward in life. It takes teeny little blips of time in your life. Teeny little blips. What's cool about that is in the next 30 days, you could completely change the, the course of your future. But what takes up the majority of our time is the time that we're trying to get into town in a rocking chair, in an inefficient structure or vehicle. And the reason why we're there is because we're rigid in the idea that old thoughts, feelings, and actions still apply. They don't apply. If you want to get into town, get in a car that works. Don't get in a car that doesn't turn on and has flat tires because you've held onto it so long. So therefore, we recognize that we've now outgrown these once useful, give grace to them, right? The good and the bad has brought you to this moment. If you're happy with where you are right now and you, and you know, you, you can acknowledge that you've learned a lot of awesome things, then you should have gratitude towards everything. But, you know, we have to recognize that we've now outgrown these once useful and rational things. And it's now time to become open, agile to new thoughts, feelings, and actions that will actually get the job done. And when you reach that place in your life, you will start to tap into. You don't have to be talented. You don't have to be lucky. You don't have to be motivated. You don't have to believe in yourself. All of that is nonsense. Those are actually part of the rigid holding on to old thoughts, feelings, and actions. You don't need any of those things. All you need to do is have a laser focus, an obsessive laser focus on your North Star, where you want to go, and just get good 
at making sure that your secondary decision to go after that is things that actually work, things that are efficient and actually work. And once you spend little bits of time, let's call that flow. By the way, you can be in a false state of flow, meaning thinking like if you go to like a Tony Robbins seminar, you could be in a state of potential flow, perceived flow for a week without even actually doing anything. You could be so convinced by what you know that you're moving forward, that you're not even doing anything and you think you're moving forward. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about becoming conscious of the actual things that you're doing and executing that actually move you forward. When you get to that place and you can identify what you've outgrown, that helps. You're going to see yourself move forward like you never knew was possible before. So that is my rise up today. Um, we will not be doing a rise up for those of you that are live on Friday this week because I will be in uh, Aruba with my chicken. Um, so I'll be back next Monday. I've got a great one. Got some great guests coming up. And Susan David will be on the show that wrote Emotional Agility. We're just trying to pin down the time for that. Um, and I love and appreciate you. You know, I honor and respect all human beings um, for just trying, you know, for just getting out of bed and trying. My hope is that my podcast, my my material, my newsletter, if you want to get on my newsletter, just DM me at Instagram, Rise Up With Dragon, subscribe, and I'll send you the link, or just go to my website, Rise Up With Dragon, and you'll find it there. But um, with my newsletter, my podcast, and all, and my book coming out and all that stuff, I'm just hoping to just release you, release the shackles and the handcuffs and just create a prison break and just release you from this mental prison that somebody else put you in. So love and appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. We'll take it out and uh, go for it.